In a land far, far away, there was an old king and his seven princess daughters who loved to dance. The girls were so jealous that the king bought each of them the same dress to avoid a fight. But the princesses were still complaining about this situation. I'm so tired of wearing the same dress every day. Mm. We too! That day, while the youngest of the princesses was wandering around the palace in a bad mood, she heard loud noises. The noise was coming from behind a mysterious door in the palace. When she went and opened the door in curiosity, she was very surprised by what she saw. Because in front of her, there was a pair of red shoes that were moving on their own. The shoes came dancing and stood right in front of the princess. When the princess curiously put on the shoes, she started running at an incredible speed. Wow! How fast I'm running! The princess set out on a long, desolate road wearing magical red shoes. Finally, the magical shoes stopped by themselves somewhere far away in front of a famous tailor. There were such beautiful dresses here that she asked the tailor for one of the dresses to wear at the ball. Of course, but remember, this dress punishes the selfish. The little princess took the dress and returned to the palace at the same speed, ignoring the tailor's words. She secretly placed her shoes under her bed while the others were sleeping because she didn't want to share her clothes with her sisters. She wanted them to be only hers. The next evening, all the sisters gathered to dance in the ballroom. While all six princesses were wearing the same old clothes, the seventh princess entered the hall in a different, brand new dress. Curious, her older sisters asked the little princess where she got this dress from. But she didn't say anything and danced to the sad eyes of her sisters and enjoyed her new dress. Days passed. The little princess came to the ball in a different and new dress every evening. She didn't care at all about her sisters, who couldn't come to the ball because they had to fix their old clothes. On a prom night, the shiny buttons on the little princess's dress caught the middle sister's attention. She knew that these buttons were only found at a famous tailor far away, but it was impossible for the little princess to go and come back all the way to that distant tailor in one day. To solve this, the sisters decided that one of them would stand guard over the little princess. Wherever she went, one of her older sisters followed her, and they never left her alone. Finally, one night, the little princess saw her older sister falling asleep during the watch. She took this opportunity and immediately put on her red magic shoes and bought another dress from the tailor. Oh, I got so many dresses! <laughs> My sisters will be so envious! <laughs> The next day, one of the older sisters noticed a huge tear in her old dress. She went and asked the little princess for help. I can't dance at the ball in this costume. Could you please give me one of your new clothes? No, I can't. They're mine. They're made for me. The little princess went to the dance alone, not caring for anyone. While she was dancing, showing off to the guests in her new outfit, one of her older sisters heard clattering under the little princess's bed. When she bent down, she saw the red magic shoes moving on their own. The moment the middle princess put on the shoes on her feet, she started running fast around. Whoa! What's going on? The middle princess was out of the palace in a blink of an eye. Oh, oh where, where did, did she go? go? Oh, oh, wow, she was just, just here. How fast oh, was she? The princess crossed the mountains and hills in a very short time. And when she finally reached that tailor, 
the shoes stopped on their own. She couldn't believe what she saw when she entered. Dozens of fancy, shiny dresses were standing in front of her. Oh, so she could get to and from the tailor so fast in magical shoes. Can I have a dress too? Of course. But remember, this dress punishes the selfish. The princess listened to the tailor's words. I promise I will never be jealous or selfish. Then she put on a new dress and returned to the palace at the same speed. On the other hand, while the little princess was dancing alone in the ballroom, her outfit suddenly turned into a shabby dress. Huh? What happened to my beautiful dress? What's going on? This is so embarrassing! While the guests were watching her with bewilderment, the little princess went back to her room crying. She searched everywhere for her magical red shoes to buy new clothes, but she couldn't find them anywhere. Ugh! Where are my red shoes? Who took them? Tell me now! At that moment, her middle sister appeared before her with the magical shoes in her hands. Plus, she was wearing a brand new dress. Were you looking for these? Y yes The little princess thus realized that her secret had been revealed. And she was very embarrassed that she did not care about the tailor's words. Her older sisters told her that sharing is the most important thing in the world. And the little princess apologized to all of them. From that day on, she shared her magical red shoes with one of her older sisters every day. The shoes took turn taking the princesses to and from the tailor at incredible speed. Thus, all the princess sisters were able to buy new clothes and dance happily in the ballroom for nights. Once upon a time, there lived a king who had 12 beautiful daughters. These 12 princesses lived all together in a big, beautiful room. The king protected his daughters with his heart. And when they went to bed at night time, he did not allow them to go out. But every morning, they would wake up to something very strange. The shoes of the princesses would all be worn out as if they had danced all night long. The king had to buy his daughters new shoes every day. But the following days after, the shoes just kept wearing out. Neither the king nor his men in the castle could solve the mystery of the shoes. How is this even possible? How can a pair of shoes worn out like that in just one night? Your Highness, we can't understand. Finally, the king said, Whoever solves the mystery of my daughter's shoes will get to marry whichever daughter of mine he chooses, become my son-in-law, and get to be the king when I pass away. But he has three days and three nights to solve it. Otherwise, he will spend his life in prison. Many young men in the kingdom and even princes from other kingdoms came to the castle for the job. For days they guarded the door of the twelve princesses' bedroom. But after some time, none of them could solve the mystery. And shoes continued to wear out by the night. Finally, a good-hearted young man also wanted to give it a shot. And so he made his way to the castle. On his way, he met a lanky old lady who looked very poor. My dear child, I'm very hungry. Would you be kind enough to give me a piece of bread? The young man gave all the food he had in his bag to the old lady. She was very happy because the previous men who had passed didn't give anything. The old woman knew that this one was different than the others. So, in return, 
she gave him a magic cape. Take this magic cape. When you wear it, you will be invisible. When it strikes 12 o'clock at night, put the cape on, be invisible and get in the princess's room. This way you can solve the mystery of the shoes. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. No, those nasty princesses. <laughs> the young man took the magic cape and went to the castle. And when he arrived, he said that he was there to solve the mystery of the shoes. First day, when he was keeping guard in front of the princess's room, the oldest princess came out with a glass of lemonade. You must be thirsty. We have prepared some lemonade for you. Please, have some. The young man forgot about the old lady's warning and drank it. Soon after, he was very sleepy. He fell asleep, snoring all night in the room that they had prepared for him. When it was morning, the young man stood up in a panic. I was supposed to wear the magic cape and get in the princess's room. On the second night, the young man once again kept guard in front of the princess's room. This time, another princess came out with a glass of juice in her hand. The young man was so thirsty while keeping guard and waiting for the nightfall. Without thinking, he drank all the juice that had been given to him. And of course, dozed off once again. The next morning when he woke up, he finally remembered the old lady's words. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. There must be a sleeping pill in the drinks the princesses give me. At that moment, the king came next to him. Two days have gone by and you still haven't solved the mystery of the shoes. If you cannot do it today, you will end up in prison and stay there for the rest of your life. The king finished his talk and went away. The young man had to solve this mystery today. That night, for the last time, the young man kept guard in front of the princess's door. This time the youngest princess came out with an orange juice in her hand. But the young man was aware now. He took the glass, thanking the princess, and when the princess left, he poured the orange juice in a pot next to him. This time round, he was standing tall. The night fell and soon it was midnight. The young man put his cape on and at that moment became invisible. Slowly he opened the door and could not believe what he was seeing. All of the princesses were wearing their most beautiful ball gowns, hair and makeup done with their very new shoes. Let's see if the young man at the door has fallen asleep. One of the princesses opened the door and looked outside. And another princess put her ear on the wall. At that moment, the young man knew that he had to make some snoring noises. <laughs> the oldest princess pushed her bed aside and clapped her hands three times. A secret passage opened in the place of the bed. The young man could not believe his eyes. One by one, all the princesses walked inside. And of course, the young man followed. The secret passage was opening to a stairway which had hundreds of steps going down. When they were going down the stairs, at one point, the young man accidentally stepped on one of the princess's skirts. Oh, somebody stepped on my skirt! Oh, nonsense. It was probably you. When the stairs had finished, they came into a forest. They went past tall trees with beautiful silver branches. The young man took a branch and kept following the princesses. After another long walk, they stopped on the edge of a river. In the river, 
There were twelve boats in the shape of swans, and in them there were twelve princes waiting for the princesses. They got on the boats, and the young man got on the last one. The boat seems heavier than usual today, as if another person is on it. Strange. Oh, come on, stop dreaming. When they crossed the river, they came across a big shiny castle, and they could hear music coming from inside. When he looked through the window, the young man saw many people dancing. As soon as they entered the castle, the princesses started to dance. They would never get tired and just kept on dancing. Of course, their shoes started to wear out. The young man could not bear his hunger any more, so he took a slice of cake on the table and started to eat. The youngest princess saw this. Hey, my cake! My cake is floating as if someone invisible is eating it. Come on, stop it with this nonsense! The young man took a golden cup from the table without anyone noticing. The princesses danced till the morning. Then they got on the boats, crossed the river, walked through the forest, walked up the very long staircase, and finally they came back to their castle. But their shoes were all worn out once again. The young man was very happy that he had finally solved the mystery of the worn-out shoes. A while later, the king came next to the young man. Your time is up today. Did you solve the mystery of the shoes? Yes, your highness, I did. And so he told him everything. The king didn't believe him at first, but when the young man showed him the silver branch from the forest and the golden cup from the shining castle, the king knew he was telling the truth. And so he kept his promise and granted him the right to marry whichever princess he chose. The young man said that he wanted to marry the youngest one. The twelve dancing princesses were clearly not happy because their secret was out now. But the young man and the youngest princess got married and lived happily ever after. One eye, two eyes, and three eyes in a land. Far, far away, there was an old woman who lived with her three daughters. The eldest daughter was one-eyed. The middle daughter had three eyes, and the youngest daughter had two eyes. Their mother, the old woman, loved the oldest two the most. She would do whatever they wanted. Thank you so much, mother. The youngest daughter was always given the chores and housework, even while they told her she was useless and incompetent. And they didn't even invite her to their dinner table. Mom, Two Eyes doesn't deserve to eat at this table with us because she can't do anything right. But I'm... So, the mother did not let her two-eyed daughter eat with them at the table. She was given only the leftover food after everyone left the table. Nevertheless, she kept her heart kind and helpful. One day, her one-eyed and three-eyed older sisters came to the girl with two eyes. They insulted her and threw dirty laundries on her. You didn't wash these clothes well. Watch them again. <laughs> Two Eyes left the house crying. She went to the river to wash the laundry again. <laughs> Why are my sisters treating me like this? What did I ever do to them? <laughs> While the two-eyed girl was weeping, a fairy appeared before her. The fairy dazzled the two-eyed girl with her shining outfit, but she kept her face hidden from her. 
Why are you crying, two-eyed beautiful girl? Because I'm the youngest in the house. My mother and sisters say I'm useless, and they hate me and only give me scraps from the dinner table. Oh, oh don't be sad, pretty girl. Look, I have a present for you. This is a magic wand. If you make a wish and wave the magic wand three times, it will come true. When the two-eyed girl made a wish, a dinner table appeared. The table was filled with delicious food. Ah, look at these dishes, all warm and fresh. Two eyes had been hungry for days, so she started to eat from the food on the table. When you're done eating, you only need to wave the wand twice, beautiful two-eyed girl. Remember, only twice. The fairy disappeared without showing her face. The two-eyed girl, after having a good meal, waved the wand twice. And the table vanished. Oh, I'm finally full. I'm so happy. But I have to hide this wand from my sisters and my mother or they will destroy me for it. The two-eyed girl returned home using the wand as a walking stick. She noticed the leftover food on the table, but she didn't eat it because she was full. Two eyes took her walking stick and went out again every day. She went to the water's edge, waved her wand, and ate as much as she wanted. But one day, when she returned home, her older sisters, One Eye and Three Eyes, noticed a change in their younger sister, Two Eyes. Why does Two Eyes smile every time she goes out and returns? And she doesn't eat the scraps we leave her. The next day, the jealous sisters followed her when Two Eyes went out. After a while, two eyes came to the water's edge. She made a wish and waved the wand three times. And a table full of delicious food appeared. Seeing this, the sisters were astonished. Ah, so she fills her stomach with delicious food every day. Day, and she doesn't share it with us either. One Eye and Three Eyes ran home and told their mother what they saw. The mother could not believe what she heard, and she was very angry. Everyone hid before Two Eyes returned home. As soon as the girl entered the house, her mother came up to her and took the wand in her hand and broke it in half. No! Why did you do that? You were feasting on delicious food while we sat at home starving. No more food for you in this house. Two Eyes was so upset that she took the broken wand and went outside crying. At that moment, the mysterious good fairy appeared before her again. Don't cry, two-eyed beautiful girl. Take the pieces of the stick and bury them under the moonlight. You will smile again. The mysterious fairy disappeared before the two eyes could see her face. Two eyes went and did what the fairy said. The next day, a tree with silver leaves and golden fruit grew where she had buried the pieces of the stick. It was so majestic and bright that everyone could see it. Two Eyes' mother and sisters wanted to go to the tree and collect some fruit from it. But whenever the sisters reached out for the fruit, the tree branches were lifted up. Seeing this, Two Eyes came to them immediately. 
maybe I can pick a fruit from this beautiful tree. Huh, we couldn't even get it. How will you succeed? Two eyes stretched out her arms towards the tree. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. After the kind words, the tree bent its branches in front of the two eyes so that she could easily take the fruit. Two eyes wanted to give some of the fruit to her mother and sisters, but they were crazy with jealousy. Oh, well, I can do that. Watch! Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter! But the tree did not respond to what one eye and three eyes had said. How is it that this tree only obeys two eyes orders? At that moment, a handsome knight approached, galloping on his horse. Get out of here, two eyes. Hide behind the bushes. Do not embarrass us with your selfishness. Poor two eyes obeyed and hid behind the bushes with the fruit in her arms. When the knight came near the silver-leaved and golden-fruited tree, he stared in amazement. Wow! If the owner of this magnificent tree would give me a silver branch, I would make her the happiest person in the world. We are the owners of this tree, sir. I can give you a silver branch. One eye and three eyes jumped and jumped to pluck a branch from the tree, but in vain. They couldn't even touch a leaf. You said this tree belongs to you? Then why can't you pluck even a single fruit from it? Two eyes wanted to come out and share her fruits with the knight, but she was afraid of her mother and sisters, so she stayed put and started to cry. <laughs> and then the mysterious fairy appeared again. Beautiful two-eyed girl, take the leaf of the tree and put it in your heart. Then face the night without any fear. The two-eyed girl did as the fairy told her, and her worn-out outfit turned into a bright, sparkling dress. She immediately came out of the bush where she was hiding and faced the night with the fruit in her arms. The night was fascinated by the beauty of two eyes, and he couldn't take his eyes off her. I can give you a silver branch with golden fruit, sir. I want to make you the happiest woman in the world, beautiful-eyed girl. Will you marry me? Two eyes immediately accepted the knight's marriage proposal, and they embraced each other. Seeing this, the jealous sisters and mother apologized to two eyes. We thought you were incompetent because you were younger than us. But you are pure-minded and kind-hearted. Sorry, sister. Two Eyes forgave her sisters and mother. The silver tree is now yours. You can get as many fruit as you want from it. After these beautiful words of Two Eyes, the mysterious fairy appeared on the top of the silver leaf tree and showed her face for the first time. Two Eyes was very surprised to see that the fairy had three eyes and realized that people only need a good heart to do good, no matter how different they look. Then Two Eyes and the Knight got on a horse and rode off to eternal happiness. Red Shoes Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a very cute girl named Karen. She lived in a tiny house with her mother and was a very happy girl. She would ask her mother about everything she was curious about. Mom, what are these tiny lights in the sky? They are stars, Karen. Everyone who lives on Earth eventually turns into a star and shines in the sky forever. 
Karen only had one toy, one dress, and a pair of wooden slippers she wore on the street. The wooden slippers her mother made for her were not very comfortable, but they were the only ones she had. One day, Karen's mother got very sick. So Karen went to town to buy medicine for her mother, and along the way, she found a pair of red shoes in a box on the roadside. The shoes shone so beautifully that Karen couldn't help but bring them home with her. Look, Mommy, I found these by the roadside. Aren't they beautiful? Just right for me. These may belong to someone else, Karen. You should immediately take them back. But if they had an owner, she wouldn't have left them there with the box. Maybe the owner dropped it accidentally. Then they shouldn't have dropped it. I found them. They belong to me now. They're mine. Baby, listen to me carefully. I may not be able to buy you new shoes right now, but I don't want you to wear someone else's shoes just because of that. Please, don't be stubborn. Promise you won't wear these red shoes. Karen sadly promised her mother not to wear red shoes and hid them under her bed. Months passed by until one day Karen came home and couldn't find her mother in the house. She looked all over until she realized that her mother had become a bright star. The next day, on her way to her mother's funeral, Karen put on those red shoes. Those who came to the funeral couldn't take their eyes off Karen's shoes. No. How dare no. she wear red no. shoes? So disrespectful. But Karen did not care because she loved her shoes. A good-hearted old woman passed by the cemetery. This old woman learned that this little girl was now an orphan and wanted to adopt her. Come with me, pretty girl. I will do my best to make you successful and beautiful when you grow up. So Karen went to live with the old woman for many years. Karen, you've been wearing these shoes since your mother's funeral. You need to take them off now. They're so dirty. No! I love my red shoes. Oh, Karen, don't be so stubborn. Come on, change your shoes. I'll buy better shoes, I promise. Karen did not want to offend the old woman, who had been so kind to adopt her. So she finally took off her red shoes and threw them away. Days passed, until one day, Karen was playing in her new room with her new clothes and toys, and the old woman brought her a new pair of shoes. But Karen didn't like these shoes at all. But these are blue! Very ugly! I don't like them at all! So for years to come, Karen missed her red shoes a lot. She grew into a beautiful young lady. But her stubborn attitude never changed. Even when the old lady brought her gifts. I don't want to wear this thing. But I knit this for you. I'll never eat this food. Make me french fries. At least take a little bite, darling. The old woman was very upset when Karen got up from the table without having a meal. She made french fries for her and took them to her room. At that time, Karen was taking off her blue shoes. Look! See? All my things are so small now. I've grown up. Well, come on then. Let's buy you new clothes and shoes. Then the old woman and Karen went to the store. Oh, look! Just like my favorite red shoes! I must have them! Let's get these! Karen, you don't need fancy red shoes! You need shoes that you can wear respectfully. Like, if we need to go to a funeral. 
I can only buy you one pair of shoes. Let's buy those black ones and go home. I am very tired. I don't care. If you don't buy both shoes, I'll walk barefoot everywhere from now on. <sighs> Little girl, I wish you weren't so stubborn. The old woman bought the black shoes for Karen and spent the last of her money to appease her with the red sparkly shoes too. They had to walk home on foot. The old woman's feet hurt a lot along the way and she could not keep up with the spoiled Karen. And Karen didn't care. She walked on home with her new red shoes. One day, the old woman told Karen that they needed to attend a funeral in town. Karen, be sure to put on your black shoes. Otherwise, it will be disrespectful at the funeral. Karen looked at the black shoes in her room and then at the bright red ones. She chose to put on the red shoes. When they left the house, she covered them up with her skirt so the old woman would not see the shoes. However, at the funeral, everyone saw Karen's shoes shining brightly under her skirt. They spoke amongst themselves about Karen's red shoes at the funeral and about how disrespectful the shoes were. When what was said came to the old woman's ear, she got very angry. You didn't listen to what I told you. And you put on the red shoes again. You're so stubborn, Karen. Show some respect. A handsome young lord, passing by at that time, was struck by Karen's beauty. He came to her and went down on his knees and gave her compliments. How beautiful you are, and so delicate in these beautiful shoes. Ah, uh, my lord... You make me blush. You must be a very good dancer. I invite you to the dance night in the palace tonight. Please come. With the happiness of the Lord's offer, Karen started dancing with joy. But after a while, Karen couldn't stop dancing. Uh, uh, why can't I stop my feet? What is happening? Oh, oh. Karen started walking away from the old lady and the Lord while she was dancing. Karen, come back. Even though the Lord chased Karen for a while, he lost her. Karen's red shoes turned out to be more stubborn than Karen. They took her until top of the mountain and made her dance day and night for three days. Karen's feet hurt so much that she screamed at every step. Ah! Ah! Oh! Even though they got into the mud and prickly needles stuck, the shoes kept dancing. Enough! I'm very tired. I won't be so stubborn from now on. I promise. Please stop. Shoes, please stop. Stop! And when Karen said she'd give up all her stubbornness, the red shoes jumped off her feet and Karen too fell to the ground and the red shoes kept on dancing without her. Karen found a stick and managed to limp home in pain. Her legs hurt a lot. She started to cry with happiness when she saw her house. The old woman greeted her at the door. They hugged each other. I know I was very stubborn, girl, but I promise I won't be like that anymore. After Karen gave up her stubbornness, things started to get better. One day, someone knocked on the door. It was the young and handsome Lord. Well, there you are, Karen. I tried to keep up, but you danced so fast. How did you do that? <laughs> Karen was glad to see the handsome and young Lord. That was the day the Lord and Karen's love began, leaving stubbornness behind. Karen 
lived a happy and peaceful life. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived two best friends. Their names were Kay and Gerda. During the cold winter nights, Kay and Gerda's biggest fun was the fairy tale time with Gerda's grandmother. Where does the snow and the cold come from? asked Gerda. From far away! Her grandmother answered and started to tell her story. There was a kingdom covered with ice and snow. The Snow Queen lived alone in the ice castle, made purely by her own magic. The Snow Queen was very beautiful and pure as ice. But the Snow Queen was evil-hearted and a lot of miracles were hidden in the magical and cold ice castle. The Icy Mirror was one of them. It was through the Icy Mirror that the Snow Queen's evil eyes watched everything that happened in the world. Right at that moment, Gerda saw the Snow Queen watching them behind the window. Kay! Grandmother! Look! It is the Snow Queen watching us through the window! I'm sure it is just a cat frozen from the cold. Grandmother, can the Snow Queen really come here? <laughs> Let her try. I would throw her in the chimney so fast, she would melt and turn into the Water Queen. <laughs> Watching through the ice mirror, the Snow Queen heard what Kay said. So you will throw me into the chimney and turn me into the Water Queen? Sparkles, fly with my powers, find this boy, make his eyes and heart mine, let his sight be evil for everything around him, and let the love in his heart be gone forever. Ordered the Snow Queen to her ice sparkles. Suddenly, a snowstorm started to blow in front of Gerda's house. The ice sparkles were moving fast towards Gerda. Curious about what was going on, Kay opened the window. Gerda screamed right away. Kay, stop! But it was too late. Oh, my eye! Something stung my eye! Oh, my heart! What is going on? And at that moment, the Snow Queen's curse was carried out by the ice sparkles. His eyes and heart were struck, and Kay had transformed into another person. Gerda asked him what had happened, but Kay yelled at her. Nothing! I'm fine! Leave me alone! This was weird. Kay was never rude to Gerda like this. She just couldn't understand why all of a sudden he started to behave this way. Kay's rude behavior continued to the next morning. When Kay was taking his sleigh out of the garden, Gerda asked him where he was going. He snapped at her again. He jumped on his sleigh and moved away. Gerda ran after him but could not reach him. Suddenly, on her sleigh, the Snow Queen appeared from nowhere and Kay started to follow her. Gerda was stunned and couldn't do anything as they both disappeared from sight. The Snow Queen was taking him to her ice castle. Gerda spent days in front of her window, waiting for Kay to come back. Days and months passed and the winter was over. But still, there was no sign of Kay. Couldn't stand waiting anymore. Gerda made up her mind, taking only the mirror her grandmother gave her. She head out to start looking for her dearest friend, Kay. Brave Gerda passed many roads and asked everyone she met on her way if they had seen Kay. Finally, she reached the shore of a river. She looked around and there was no one to be seen that she could ask about Kay. She asked the river but could not get a reply. 
At that moment, a seagull came next to her. The river would definitely have an answer for you. But first, you have to give her a gift. Gerda took out her dearly beloved necklace and placed it on the water of the river. Suddenly, a miracle happened, and from nowhere, a small boat appeared right in front of her. Gerda thought that the river liked her gift and was returning the favor. As soon as she hopped on, the boat started to move on its own. At that moment, a crow started to fly over her head. It was as if he was trying to tell her something. So Gerda started to follow him. She followed the crow for a while until they reached the icy seas. Right in the middle of the ice, there was a pirate ship from some time ago where the crow flew and landed. Gerda followed him on her boat and made her way to the ship. So, is this how I get to the Queen's castle with this pirate ship? Pirates appeared on the deck and one of them, a pirate girl, approached Gerda. You go wherever we go and that is... Nowhere! Right at that moment, the Snow Queen was trying to make Kay forget about everything in his past. She succeeded up to some point, but whatever she did, Gerda would not leave Kay's memory. Gerda! Oh, Gerda! Soon your heart will turn into ice and you will not remember a thing! Finding out about her friend Kay being held captive in Snow Queen's castle, the pirate girl told Gerda to better forget about him because there was no way to get him out of there. I won't forget. He's my best friend. I have to find him, replied Gerda. The pirate girl could not really understand Gerda's persistence. Actually, she wanted her to stay there and become her friend. But Gerda was determined to find Kay. I'll do whatever it takes to rescue him. Because she had no friends, the pirate girl really admired Gerda's attitude and decided to help her. The next day, at sunrise, the pirate girl brought Gerda a reindeer. This was the fastest reindeer in the whole Snow Kingdom and she was going to show Gerda the way. Promise me that you will get that icy witch! You will also save our ship! I promise I'll return your favour, answered Gerda. Riding the reindeer, Gerda was on her way. First she had to find out how she could defeat the Snow Queen. The reindeer was going to show her how. After a long journey, they had reached the North Pole. An old wise man welcomed them. So... You finally brought the mirror, huh? Gerda could not understand how the wise man knew about her mirror. But nevertheless, she knew she came to the right place. So she took out her mirror and showed it to the man. So I'm going to finish the Snow Queen with this? This is a magic mirror. It shows the truth. Nothing but the truth. Even if it is hidden. Deep inside. Because nothing was stronger than true love, the real strength in all of us was love. Gerda found out who the Snow Queen was, thanks to the wise man. If she could reveal the truth, she could beat her. Because actually, in the past, the Snow Queen was a good girl, full of love. Wherever she touched, flowers blossomed and her smiling eyes shined brighter than the sun. She was a unique and happy girl named Lilla. But everyone thought she was a little witch and did not play with or even talk to her. Left all alone, Lilla wasn't a happy girl anymore. She started to hate everything and everyone around her. Until one day, she made a wish. Everyone mean to me shall turn to ice. And then she built a castle made out of snow and lived in it 
far away from anyone, all alone and without love or joy. Gerda arrived at the Snow Queen's castle and entered inside. She saw Kay in one of the corners, making an ice sculpture. You're here! I found you! Kay! It's me, Gerda! Don't you remember me? Kay looked at Gerda, but he did not recognize her. Ha! Ha! His heart, like everything else here, has turned into ice. Gerda did not pay any attention to what the Snow Queen was saying. Let him go! He belongs to me now. I will turn you into ice as well. No, you won't make it. Kay, I love you. Kay slowly started to remember. Gerda, yes, I remember now. Furious. The Snow Queen shook her wand as fast as light and out came the curse of ice. Right at that moment, Gerda took out her mirror and held it against the curse. Hitting the mirror, the curse disappeared. And the moment had come. The Snow Queen looked at Gerda's mirror, only to see that it wasn't her reflection she saw on the mirror. It was the face of a little girl. The face of Lilla. Suddenly, the Snow Queen returned to her little and loving self and became Lilla again. Thank you very much. Now I know who I really am. I'm free again. Goodbye. Kay and Gerda looked at each other and smiled. From now on, they would never part and they would grow together. Just like the roses they had planted in their front yards.